Hello everyone, this is my very first video and I was thinking about making a tutorial. This is an illustrator tutorial on how to make an infinity loop. We're going to start with a new document. The name, it doesn't matter. The new document profile should be web, that's the one I'm using, but any profile will do fine. I'm going to start with the ellipse tool. We make a circle here. I'm going to move it. Uh, we we set the field to empty and the stroke to black. Now the stroke weight should be something about 60 points depending on the size of the loop you want to make. We're going to choose the reflection tool and make sure that your uh, smart guides are on. To turn them on just hit command U. Holding the Option key, I'm going to click on the anchor point on the very right of the circle. This gives us a little dialog box. The axis will be vertical, and I always keep preview on so I can see what's going on. We're going to choose the copy, so we get two uh, paths. Now we're going to select everything, and we're going to make a copy of that and paste it on the back. Hit Command C, Command B. Now, now that we have that, we're going to do uh, we're going to pick the direct selection tool and choose two of the anchor points for each circle. In this case I'm going to pick the top anchor point and the left anchor point and we're going to hit delete to remove them. Now we're going to pick the right circle and we're going to do the same in a mirror way. So I'm going to pick the bottom anchor point and the right anchor point and hit delete. That gives us a little uh, a quarter of a circle. So we have a quarter of a circle here and a quarter of a circle there. And we're going to move both quarters to the bottom of the circles so that they are behind each of the paths. Again, we're going, to, uh, we're going to select everything, we're going to Object and Expand. Fill and Stroke is fine. Now that we have these uh, full shapes, we're going to pick one of the circles and we're going to pick the quarter of a circle that we want to use to make the little gap here. So, I pick this one, we hit Shift, Right, Shift, button. We can do that again if you want a more pronounced uh, gap. <clears throat> and we're going to pick this circle and the quarter of the circle we just moved and we're going to hit minus back on the Pathfinder tab. Now you can see this one is uh, this little corner is showing up. That's fine. We're going to fix that in a bit. Now we pick the other circle and we choose the other quarter of a circle. Again, we need to move this one using the shift. We move it to the left and to the top. And we pick this one, Pathfinder tab, we hit minus back. Now we're going to fix. Oh, I'm sorry, I moved it only once. It's meant to be moved twice. So we get a more pronounced gap, uh, a more pronounced gap there. So we pick a circle and we pick the quarter of a circle and we hit minus back in the Pathfinder. Okay, now we're going to zoom in here and fix the little anchor points that were showing up. We pick this one too, we'll move it in. Doesn't matter where, they're about to disappear anyway. We select everything, we hit merge, and there you go. That's an infinite uh, an infinite loop or infinity loop, I'm not sure. <clears throat> so now let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding some color. I like green, so that's what I'm going for. I'm going to pick the radial gradient and I'm going to pick this green 
and this green swatch and we get this shape <clears throat> we're going to lock that layer and add a new layer underneath that I'm going to zoom up a little so I can see the whole square I'm going to pick the rectangle tool and make a square here now I'm going to pick a bluish color because I think that makes a uh, best contrast with the green and we hit yeah actually brown is better well, any color will do. Just make sure it makes a nice contrast here. And I'm also going to pick a linear gradient here. We're going to choose the gradient tool. Hit the bottom of the artboard, hold shift, move up, and we get this gradient. I'm going to go from green to purple. And the green, we're going to change a little bit the hue. So it's something a little bit more red. There we go. And that's it. You have an interesting infinite loop on a nice uh, gradient background. Any feedback that you can have on how to make this a lot faster, uh, feel free to comment. I'm always looking to improve my technique. For now, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope uh, some of this was helpful. Uh, maybe get you inspired or get some ideas uh, but until next time i guess thanks a lot for watching